So as we move into 2.4, the math starts to get a little more involved with what we call variance. Variance has a lot of vocabulary um, that we probably, like, like I said, in Unit 1, we have these PowerPoints. You also have e-chapter links. You, you can do some reading out of the book. So I'm going to try to look at the PowerPoints here. I'm going to look at the one on measures of variation. So we can get this to pull up here. I'm going to go ahead and download it for myself. You might not have to necessarily download it. I'm going to try to make it a little bit bigger for you. Okay. Maximize this. And so we have, in chapter two, we have descriptive statistics. Like I said, that there's a lot of math involved here so far in descriptive statistics. It's that, that quantitative uh, data, if you will. So we've kind of explored frequency distributions and the graphs, and we've just finished working with what we call measures of central tendency. Mean, median, and mode are the main ones, but we, we spent a lot of time more on the mean as we had, especially those weighted means and the frequency distribution had to figure out those means as well. So 2.4 is gonna be about variation. Variation kind of like the way you see this word vary, how, how things may differ, how things may vary. In statistics, it basically refers to how the data spreads out. So what we're going to get into measures of variation. One of the first ways to measure a spread is what we call range. So that's an easier way uh, to determine a spread is just find the range. What I'm going to spend a little bit of time on this video is we're going to talk about variance and standard deviation of a population and of a sample. So remember, a population represents all, and a, a sample is what we use if we can't capture all the data. So we have those two words with the pop pick, pick up on population and sample. So remember, mu and was is the symbol they use for population involving the mean, and x bar was the symbol we used for. Um, when we were dealing with a sample. So let's see what we got here. So range, as I said, you know, range is pretty easy. It's the difference between the max and the min. And the data must be quantitative, as we said. Most of this, if you're gonna do math on it, it has to be quantitative. So that's the kind of math we're doing right now. So if you can find the maximum data entry, if you can subtract the minimum data entry, you're kind of home free on that. So we can find the range of, we, so we get these two corporations, each hired 10 graduates, starting salaries of each graduate were shown, and the range of the starting salaries for corporate A. So find the range of the salary, starting salaries for corporate A. So we have these two corporations. And they did not put this data in order. It would be nicer if it was in some type of order. And then we see the salaries of corporation B, and again, they're not in order. But all we're asked is find the, the range of each one of these. So notice how, since we're talking about Corporation A, we just can put th that data in the right order. And then we can see that the minimum value is 37 and the maximum value is 47. Remember, I also did a video on this where you actually could use Excel to do this. So you have 47, take away 37, and the, the range or the spread of the data where it's distributed, about you know 10 across. So Again, these are in thousands of dollars, I believe. This is like 37,000, this is 47,000. So keep that in mind. So these actually don't mean $37, but $37,000. So we get into variation. So both, both data sets in the last example have a mean of 41.5 and a median of 41 and a mode of 41. But what they're talking about, if you look at the data, the two sets, the two sets differ quite a bit. So what, what do we mean by that? So if we make a table, notice that on Corporation A, you can kind of see the data doesn't look anything like Corporation B. They don't look anything alike there. So the data looks a lot different. So 
the difference is that the even though like I said both data sets have the same basic basic means, we kind of see that and they even have the same median in the same mode, the data just does not look the same. So the mean and median and mode are not really good indicators if you're wanting to get hired on at Corporation A or Corporation B, you know, you're you're thinking, well, I mean, the, the median salary is 41.5. Um, it doesn't matter which company I pick. But notice, though, if you got hired on at Corporation B, there's a risk of getting paid much, much less. And there's also a chance that you can get paid much, much more. The sellers are more distributed. They're more spread out. Where Corporation A, everything is more compact. So there is a big difference in how the data is. It, it varies greatly in Corporation B, where it's really tightly connected here in Corporation A. So some things we're going to be have to pick up on is some words. One of the words is deviation. Deviation is kind of how things differ. So if we hear that word deviation. There's probably going to be subtraction involved. So deviation in this book is going to be the difference between the data entry, which they're going to use the letter X, and the mean of the data set. If we're talking about a population set, the deviation is going to be, the deviation of X is going to be the data entry minus mu, which is going to represent the mean of the population. If we're talking about a sample data set, it's going to be X equals the data entry minus X bar, which is a mean of a sample. So then I have these formulas for population variance. And this is the lowercase sigma. So we, we say this is sigma as well. And this is also sigma, but this is lowercase sigma and this is uppercase sigma. Just like when you make the letter A, there's a lowercase A and there's an uppercase A in our English language. So these both stand for sigma, but little sigma squared here is gonna stand for population variance, where this is actually the summation symbol, which means to add. So remember this X minus U represents the, uh, the deviation between the data and the mean. And notice how they square it. The reason they square it is because it's important to kind of get away from, uh, I think if you didn't square it, it's gonna cause some, some problems because everything would kind of drop out of the problem. So somebody along the way discovered that if you square this, it's gonna allow me to do a little bit more math with it. So that's an interesting thing that if you read up a little bit more on it, you'll understand why they square that. So then I'm gonna be dividing by the number of, of data entries or the population. So the, the population standard deviation, what they do is they actually take the square root of the variance and that actually represents the standard deviation. So sigma squared represents the population variance and sigma, which is the square root of sigma squared is gonna represent the standard deviation. So we're gonna be asked to find the variance and their st standard deviation. The one that's gonna be probably most useful is actually standard deviation because it's gonna be in the same unit of measurement. So if we're talking about population, this is like population squared, where this actually represents population. And that would make better sense. It doesn't. The population squared does not really give us a whole lot of meaning, but population does. So this is like people squared, and this is simply people. So that's why standard deviation probably will win out as a more useful tool. So some observations about the standard deviation. So you can read through that as well. And um, I'm going to pause here and kind of just see if we can kind of work on some examples of standard deviation. So in this PowerPoint, you're going to be able to see a lot of formulas and things as we move forward. You may want to make note of these formulas as we come on. Notice how we have the Greek letter mu, which again represents the mean of the population of the data set. Notice how it's the sum of the data entries divided by the population or the number of entries. We have the deviation, which is going to be this X minus mu. So again, we're talking about population there in that sense. The square of a deviation, that's going to be important when we're going to be starting to determine what's called variance, population variance. And also, when we do variance, we have to do what's actually called the sum 
of the squares of the deviation there. So if we divide the sum of the squares by n, this becomes the formula for population variance. So this is an important formula for variance. This would be something you'd want to take note of and put that down in your notes. Um, if you take the square of that, as we said, this becomes then what we call the standard deviation of the population. So this is another important formula as we move forward. So to find the population variance and the standard deviation of, a, of the starting salaries for corporation I listed in the, in the first example, this would be some things you could go through. So I'm gonna see if you can kind of sort through this using the PowerPoint and see if you can follow the steps there. What I'm gonna do also is I'm going to show you how to do this on a calculator. So you don't have to necessarily do this all by hand, but you can get some important information here of where finding the population uh, variation and the standard deviation can be done there. So this is actually gonna be the population standard deviation formula here. So I will stop there, but I will show you how to do this on a calculator if you like. <laughs>